Good morning everyone, especially to our ethics instructor, Ma'am Amelia Inviques. I am Jayan T. Magsipok, a BE Ed student. This morning, Group 1 will discuss the principle of utility in utilitarianism. But before we go on on our discussion, here are the unfamiliar words that we found out in our topic. Chapter 2, Utilitarianism, has three objectives. First, discuss the basic principles of utilitarian ethics. Second, distinguish between two utilitarian models, quantitative model of Jeremy Bentham and the qualitative model of John Stuart Mill. And apply utilitarianism in understanding and evaluating local and international scenarios. What is utilitarianism? Utilitarianism is an ethical theory that argues for the goodness of pleasure and the determination of right behavior based on the usefulness of the action's consequences. This means that pleasure is good and that the goodness of an action is determined by its usefulness. Utilitarianism claims that one's action and behavior are good in as much as they are directed toward experience of the greatest pleasure over pain for the greatest number of persons. Its root word utility, which refers to the usefulness of the consequences of one's action and behavior. When we argue that wiretapping is permissible because doing so results in better public safety, then we are arguing in a utilitarian way. It is utilitarian because we argue that some individual rights can be sacrificed for the sake of greater happiness of the many. So there are two utilitarian thinkers. Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill. Their system ethics emphasizes the consequences of actions. This means that the goodness or the badness of an action is based on whether it is useful in contributing to specific purpose for the greatest number of people. Utilitarianism is consequentialist. This means that the moral value of actions, decisions, is based solely or greatly on the usefulness of their consequences. It is the usefulness of results that determines whether the action or behavior is good or bad. But not all consequentialist theories are utilitarian. For Bentham and Mill, Utility refers to a way of understanding the results of people's action. They are interested in whether these actions contribute or not to the total amount of resulting happiness in the world. The utilitarian value pleasure and happiness. This means that the usefulness of actions is based on its promotion of happiness. Bentham and Mill understand happiness as the experience of pleasure for the greatest number of persons, even at the expense of some individual rights. Who is Jeremy Bentham? Jeremy Bentham was born on February 15, 1748 in London, England. He was the teacher of James Mill, father of John Stuart Mill. Bentham first wrote about the greatest happiness principle of ethics and was known for a system of penal management called panopticon. He was advocate of economic freedom, women's right, and separation of church and state. He was also advocate of animal rights and abolition of slavery, death penalty, and corporal punishment for children. 
Bentham denied individual legal rights nor agreed with the natural law. On his death on June 6, 1832, Bentham donated his curves to the University College, London. Jeremy Bentham was also English philosopher, jurist, and social reformer regarded as the founder of modern utilitarianism. Bentham defined as the fundamental axiom of his philosophy the principle that it is the greatest happiness of the greatest number that is the measure of right and wrong. That's the end of my discussion. And thank you for listening. One of my groupmates will discuss the principle of utility and the principles of utilitarian ethics. Good morning everyone, especially to our instructor, Mrs. Amelia Enriquez. Good morning, ma'am. I am Elika Sheba Ambito, B. Ed 1A. Today, I'm going to discuss the topic about the principle of utility. The principle of utility refers to our subordination of these two sovereign masters, pleasure and pain. The concept, on the other hand, refers to how our actions are motivated by our desire to avoid suffering and pain. It's the same as saying that we do what is pleasurable and avoid what is difficult in our daily lives. This means that experiencing pleasure isn't enough. We must also consider whether the actions we do make us happier. The principle of utility has been identified as the desire for pleasure and the avoidance of pain. Bentham associates pleasure with happiness. Mill agreed with Bentham's utilitarian principle. He defines moral good as happiness and happiness as pleasure as a result. Mill clarifies that what makes humans happy is meant pleasure whereas lack of pleasure make us unhappy. Things that bring enjoyment and pleasure are good, while those that bring misery and pain are bad. According to Mill, we act and do things because they are pleasurable, and we avoid doing them because they are painful. Mill explains that we find our acts pleasurable because they are pleasurable in and of themselves are because they eventually lead to the advancement of pleasure and the avoidance of pain. Moral value, according to Bentham and Mill, is defined as whatever produces happiness or pleasure while avoiding pain. The next step is to comprehend the nature of pleasure and pain, determine a criterion for distinguishing pleasures, and measure the resulting pleasure or pain. A distinction is made between Bentham and Mill in relation to these mentioned disciplines. Mill refers to what Bentham called the inherent moral preferability of pleasure as a theory of existence. It's difficult to ignore the pursuit of happiness and the avoidance of pain when we evaluate what morality do and how they assess their behaviors. The pursuit of pleasure and the avoidance of pain are not only significant concepts for Bentham and Mill, but they are the only principles in determining the morality of an action. Who is John Stuart Mill? He was born in Fentonville, London, United Kingdom on May 20, 1806. He was the son of James Mill. He was homeschooled. At the age of three, he began studying Greek. At the age of 8, he began studying Latin. At the age of 11, he authored a history of Roman law. At the age of 20, he had a psychological breakdown. After 21 years of friendship, he married Harriet Taylor, and in his long essay, Utilitarianism, he explains his ethical theory and defends utilitarian beliefs. So there are three principles that serve as the basic axioms of utilitarianism. Number one, pleasure or happiness is the only thing that truly has intrinsic value. Utilitarianism takes its name from the term utility, 
which does not imply useful in this context, but rather pleasure or happiness. Mill admits that we tend to value things other than pleasure and happiness for their own sake, such as beauty and knowledge, health, he claims, however, that we never appreciate something unless we correlate it with pleasure or satisfaction. As a result, we appreciate beauty because it is pleasing to the eye. We value knowledge because it helps us cope with the world in most cases and so is linked to happiness. Love and friendship are valued because they bring us joy and happiness. Pleasure and satisfaction, on the other hand, are unusual in that they are cherished solely for their own sake. There is no need to give any other reason to value them. It is preferable to be joyful rather than miserable. Mill considers happiness to be a collection of many different pleasures. Number two, action are right in so far as they promote happiness, wrong in so far as they produce unhappiness. This principle is controversial. It turns utilitarianism into a sort of consequentialism because it states that an action's morality is determined by its consequences. The better the deed is, the more happiness is produced among people influenced by it. The principle is controversial because many individuals believe that the purpose of an action determines its morality. Number three, everyone's happiness counts equally. This may appear to be an ego moral principle, but it was very radical when Bentham proposed it. A prevalent belief 200 years ago was that some lives and the happiness they carried were just more essential and valuable than others. So this equality was extremely progressive in Bentham's time. It was the driving force behind calls for the government to implement policies that benefited everyone equitably. It's also why utilitarianism stands in stark contrast to any form of egoism. In another aspect, Bentham's devotion to equality was revolutionary. Most moral philosophers before him believed that because animals cannot understand or articulate and lack free will, humans have no special responsibility to them. This, however, is meaningless to Bentham. What counts is whether or not an animal can experience pleasure or pain. He does not advocate treating animals as though they were humans. He believes that the world would be better place if animals and humans shared more pleasure and less pain. As a result, we should try to avoid causing animals unnecessary pain. So here are the basic principles of utilitarian ethics. Number one, utilitarian ethics prioritize the common good over personal gain. The self-interest perspective is not completely lost. Rather, the self finds its position among the other people affected by moral action. Number two, each person is valued equally under, under utilitarian ethics, regardless of social status, race, gender, age, sexual orientation, or religion. Number three, happiness and pain are attempted to be quantified in utilitarian ethics. Number four, happiness as an intrinsic good is distinguished from variables that are useful in obtaining happiness in utilitarian ethics. Education, work, proper housing, and healthcare are all essential that contribute to happiness as a goal. Number five, Several aspects will be considered in evaluating choices for a moral issue. That's all and I hope you learned something from me. Thank you for listening and watching. God bless us all. Everyone, my name is Kalendran B. Ed 1A. And this what kind of pleasure is morally preferable and valuable? Are all pleasure necessarily and ethically good? Does this mean that because eating or exercising is good, it is morally acceptable to eat and exercise excessively? 
while utilitarian supporters do not condone excessive pleasure while others are suffering. It cannot be justified on utilitarian grounds. Why some person indulge in intravagant pleasure at the expense of others? Suppose nobody is suffering, it is morally permissible on utilitarian principle to minimize pleasure by wanton intemperance. While Betham and Mel agree on the moral value of pleasure, they do not have the same view on this question. In determining the moral preparability of actions, Betham provides a framework for evaluating pleasure and pain commonly called philosophic calculus. What is philosophic calculus? Philosophic calculus is a common currency framework that calculates the pleasure that some action can produce. In this framework, an action can be evaluated on the basis of intensity or strength of pleasure, duration or length of the experience of pleasure, certainly, uncertainly, or the likelihood that pleasure will be occur, and propinquity, remoteness, or how soon there will be pleasure. These indicators allow us to measure pleasure and pain in an action. Philosophic calculus allows the evaluation of all action and their resultant pleasure. This means that actions are evaluated on this single scale regardless of preference and values. In this sense, pleasure and pain can only quantitatively differ but not qualitatively differ from other experience of pleasure and pain accordingly. For male, utilitarianism cannot promote the kind of pleasures appropriate to pigs or to any other animals. He thinks that there are higher intellectual and lower base pleasure. For male crowd bestial, pleasure which are appropriate for animals are degrading to us because we are by nature not easily satisfied by pleasures only for pigs. Human pleasure pleasures are qualitatively different from animal press pleasures. It is unfair to assume that we are merely pursue pleasure appropriate for bees even if there are instances when we choose to pursue such base pleasure. Contrary to beta, male algors that that quality is more preparable than quantity. An excessive quantity of what it is otherwise pleasurable might result in pain. We can consider, for example, our experience of excessive eating or exercising. Whereas eating the right amount of food can be pleasurable, excessive eating may not be the same is true when exercising. If the quality of pleasure is sometimes more important than quantity, then it is important to consider the standards where the difference of pleasure can be judged. What Mill discovers anthropologically is that a qual choice of knowledgeable person point that higher intellectual pressure are preferable than poorly sensual appetites. In dividing father, the comparative choice between intellectual and bestial pleasure, Mel offer an Im imaginative to thought experiment. He asks whether a human person will prefer to accept the highly pleasurable life of an animal while at the same time being denied of everything that makes him a person. He thinks that few, if any, would give up human qualities of higher reason for the pleasure of a pig, while it is difficult to understand how Mel was able to compare Swedish pleasure with human ones. We can presume that it will be better to be so rich, dissatisfied that a pig satisfied, simple, but as a human beings, we prefer the pleasure that are actually within our grubs. It is easy to compare extreme types of pleasure as in the case of pigs and humans. But it is difficult to compare pleasure deeply integrated in our way of life. The pleasure of an elongo eating chicken in a cell and an igorot eating pinic 
pecan is an example.